this is Caleb's take. I don't entirely agree with it, Caleb. Can I go ahead and give you that forewarning? Yep. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you just shot down my uh throwing throw or go. So I, I, I'm I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit here. Actually, a lot of bit, but you think that Josh Heupel threw Joe Milton the third under the bus to protect Nico on Saturday. Why? Absolutely. Not only did he throw Joe Milton under the bus, he, and I, I you, you say I use the word a lot. I'm going to use it again. He admitted basically to gaslighting us all for three years on Joe Milton, but we were all critical of him. Okay. So gaslighting is again, what propping him up, telling no, you no, no. Crazy. gaslighting is making you feel crazy for believing something that's true. Okay. Yeah. So we, yeah, he made, he gaslit us into believing that, oh, we saw that Joe Milton has issues and he can't play, but Josh Heibel was just insisting, no, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Y'all are crazy. Joe Milton can play. So that, yeah, that was gaslighting. So when asked about, we just compared it guys, when asked about the difference between Nico Imaliava and Joe Milton, the third, um, given what Josh Heibel had said about Joe Milton, the entire time he was at Tennessee, Dave, wouldn't you just say that was a mistake by both quarterbacks, quarterbacks make mistakes and they move on, right? Uh, well, yeah, maybe, but what he said, go ahead and get to it. Cause I don't have a problem with it. Josh Heupel said, quote, different situations, older quarterback versus first year guy experienced. Basically saying it was way more inexcusable when Joe Milton, the third ran out of bounds. Now, Dave, you can say that I can say that. But this is the same. more excusable with Nico running out of bounds, not Milton. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's no, he said I said more inexcusable with okay, Joe Milton gotcha. running out of bounds. Gotcha. You can say that. I can say that. Josh Heupel, for three years, was trying to tell us there was nothing wrong with Joe Milton's game at all. And now, when he wants to protect his investment in Nico Imaliava for making the same mistake, all of a sudden. Let me come out and let you guys know why Joe Milton made a mistake in 2021 that was inexcusable. Even though after he made that inexcusable mistake, where, as Heibel made it very clear, that implicit in what Heibel said, Dave, is there's no excuse for Joe Milton to make that mistake because he was so experienced. Fine. You stuck with him as your quarterback, as your backup in 2022. You stuck with him in 2023. You didn't come, You didn't start Nico when a lot of people thought you should have. And on top of that, you didn't go after another transfer. You ran Taven Jackson off to Indiana. You had your plan to stick with Joe Milton as your starting quarterback in the middle of 2021 during the 2023 season when you saw him make a play that you now imply to us was totally inexcusable. I'm sorry. This is so anathema to everything Josh Heifel was telling us about Joe Milton for three years now that even if it's true, it's ragingly hypocritical to come from him. Okay. Uh, what the H brought to you by Medicare Misty. Why Josh Heupel said the exact right thing. 30 seconds from Medicare Misty. 19 years this year. Well, I've been in the community since 1993. You're getting a lot of information. Unlike when you were working, you basically they made the choice for you. Now you have to make the choice. Come to us and let us help you make it easy. Call Medicare Misty. MedicareMisty.com or 423-777-5577. Let us help them sleep at night. And we call her Medicare Misty. All right, Caleb, here's why I differ from you. Yes, Joe Milton was propped up to some extent, Caleb. I agree with that. I've got no issue with that. However, I think he was propped up for good reason. Now, you're going to absolutely hate what I'm about to say, but I have talked to people that have been at practice and thought that Joe Milton heading into the 2021 season was the better quarterback, but it was close. Now, I know that you don't think that's the case, and a lot of people have questioned that, but I've been told that by people that saw practice at the time. So I'm going to defend Josh Heupel for starting Joe Milton. In retrospect, it was a, a bad move. Hendon Hooker was the better quarterback, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. But when Joe Milton goes in there and runs out of bounds, I believe that was an, an indictment of his play. And I don't think it's throwing him under the bus 
for Josh Heupel to say different situation because it is a very different situation. And also, to be real honest with you, what's he supposed to say? Because the two plays look so eerily similar, it would be a, a cause for panic in Knoxville and probably has been. Of all the things that happened on Saturday, other than the final score, wasn't that the most troubling or would it have been the offensive tackles or coaching or Dylan Sampson saying they're lackadaisical in the bye week? I still don't get that. Um, and we'll get into that blame pie part a little bit later. But no, I don't I don't have a problem with what Heupel said. I think he wanted to say more. I think he feels on the defense about Joe Milton and the selection he made from the get. And that's troublesome to me because he's stubborn. But I don't have a problem with how he's handled the quarterbacks. And now in retrospect, let me retract the argument that I made last year that you should bring Nico in instead of Joe Milton. I mean, clearly, if he's not ready now, he wasn't ready then when he was skinnier, as you pointed out, and had a bad wrist earlier in the year. So I'll take that back. In other words, as goofy as it sounds to you, I think Josh Heupel has handled the quarterbacks quite well to this point. Okay. Um, a couple of things to unpack there. Well, let me just ask you I this. Know, I know that Caleb's really disagreeing with me when I get the pause. Well, let me ask you this, because you say Nico May is not ready now, so he wouldn't have been ready last year. Do you think he would have been more ready now had they started him last year? Yes. Now, that's a different argument. If you want to say, get him ready for 2024, play him and realize that you could have some struggles. Now, there also is the argument, Caleb, that Joe Milton had the locker room and that Joe Milton was, was a good or well-liked guy. I think that's overplayed, but you... I don't think it's overplayed, but I think once Hyper went into 2023, he, because of his original sin of sticking with Joe Milton, his hands were tied. I'm going to say this. I have been very critical of Josh Hyper choosing to start Joe Milton over Hendon Hooker at the beginning of the 2021 season. And I, I know you, what you say about what people saw at practice. I still don't believe it. That's fair. I think, I think Josh Hyper was, um, I think Josh Hyper wanted Joe Milton to be his guy from the start. And that's because Joe Milton was his guy that he picked. Now, he did go to Hendon Hooker early. I give him a lot of credit. The reason I can't give him credit or can't defend what he said over the weekend, Dave, is not about the starting Joe Milton at the beginning of the 2021 season. While that was inexcusable, it's also the fact that the Joe Milton running out of bounds incident wasn't when he was starting Joe Milton. It was later in the year when Joe Milton came in and he did that. You saw that. Josh, Josh Heupel saw that in 2021. He's acknowledging now. That was an inexcusable mistake by Joe Milton beyond what Nico Imaliava made. Yet he still, in the middle of the 2021 season, made no plans for 2023 to have a quarterback after Hendon Hooker. Still made it all about Joe Milton being his guy in 2023. Why? If you knew that was inexcusable then, if you knew Joe Milton was prone to those mistakes, why would you do that? This is why I don't believe him. I think Josh Eipel threw Joe Milton under the bus. And the real crux of the story, Davis, he threw Joe Milton under the bus because he's overprotecting Nico Iamaliava. He is keeping him bubble wrapped. I, I agree with that. And uh, Timothy throws in a super chat. You're welcome to do so. It will go to Quincy Calhoun. That is Caleb's uh, now four-month-old son, I think. Uh, Crompton is right. Heupel doesn't really trust Nico. Jonathan Crompton does some work with uh, another uh, online entity and he's done stuff with us from time to time and he has said that Heupel doesn't really trust Nico well I tend to agree with that with the fact that Nico's not throwing the ball over the middle a la Joe Milton with the fact that uh, Nico to me is not running the football as much I don't think he trusts him maybe from a durability standpoint um, but I also think this, I think he wants to be, I think he wants his quarterback to play at a high level. And while we're going to get into the blame pie idea of it, I, I think that Tennessee forced the issue in terms of trying to get the ball downfield. And that's the one way that Arkansas was not going to get beat on Saturday. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And by the way, that's the one way Tennessee could struggle all year. We heard way too much. 
this may be another topic, Dave, but we heard way too much about Nico Imaliava. I put money on him in the hot to win the Heisman. It's not like Josh Heupel ran from the heights surrounding Nico Imaliava. Is that fair to say? And yeah, and here's my biggest concern. For, yeah, and here's my biggest concern for Nico. There is going to be a poster boy at some point of NIL gone wrong. That a guy got too much on the front end, the pressure was too much, and he left the school that he was in. And I hate to tell you, but Nico's the front runner for that right now. And part of that is on the University of Tennessee, the fact that they promoted his Beats by Dre thing. I want him to make all the money he can. But I had a problem with that, the university getting involved with his individual promotions, Caleb, because then you're just increasing the hype, increasing the hype. And we're part of it, but we were never led to believe that he could be a question mark heading into the season. We were, Josh Heupel never said anything to the extent of, hey, um, we got a freshman quarterback. We're going to see what he can do. That wasn't the case. The The fill was full go from the get, right? I totally agree. I totally agree. It was a huge mistake.